Dozens of states, including Arizona, are suing Meta. The lawsuit claims Meta's products have harmed young users' mental health. They say addictive features like infinite news feeds and frequent notifications on apps like Instagram have contributed to a mental health crisis in the United States. At a press conference earlier today, Attorney General Chris Mays said Meta knew its platforms were dangerous. In short, Meta has profited from monetizing children's addiction to its platforms. Just last month, the Tucson Unified School District also joined a lawsuit against several social media companies, including Meta, for their impact on students' mental health. Now more than ever, mental health has become a central normalized topic of conversation in households and online. That's especially true for Gen Z. Matt Pearl looks at how young adults aren't just facing new mental health challenges, but using their voice to push for solutions. Of digital decadence. In my job, I can research virtually any topic without leaving my office. And if I Google young adults and mental health, I'll be bombarded with studies and articles sounding the alarm. None of my friends and I know how to be bored. Emma Lemke is a student at Washington University in St. Louis. When she did the research, she saw its glaring blind spot. But the one thing I could not find in any of that research and any of that literature were young people. And I thought that was an incredible missing piece because as young people, we are the experts in the space. Lemke and Zane Landon. You want this in-person activity. Are members of Generation Z, the first generation to only know a life of digital decadence and to know the effects it can have. But they're also examples of a generation finally having its say in how to address those effects. First, the bombardment. Do that Google search and you'll learn more than half of young adults feel significant stress about sexual harassment and assault. Three in four feel significant stress about mass shootings. The National Survey of Children's Health found an increase of 1.5 million children with anxiety or depression between 2016 and 2020. Social media is a recurring Catalyst. I began to count my likes and my comments and my followers obsessively. Lemke says she got social media at age 12 and hit bottom at 16. All of these negative experiences really spiraled me into depressive thoughts and anxious, you know, anxious bouts. Now at 21, she's the founder and director of Log Off. It's a movement to empower young adults to avoid the traps of social media. We mention it here because in three short years, it's played a role in legislative campaigns, most notably the push in California for a bill that restricts how much data sites can mine from younger users. It was signed into state law last year. It's currently in dispute in the courts. They couldn't figure out who I was. Landon dealt with anxiety and depression throughout childhood. Now he's on the Young Adult Advisory Group for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. It was built last year to bring Gen Z voices to bigger tables. If you look at the mental health conversation before COVID and post COVID, very different conversations. There has been a burden placed on those members and those generations to have conversations about issues that they don't understand. The generation of digital decadence is also the generation most likely to report poor mental health and most likely to seek help. And because they're more open, because they're more vocal, they've become more active in solutions on campus, in state houses, in general. I'm Matt Pearl.